All right, folks, welcome back to another breaking series. This week, our host is outside of Scotland. There's no course drenched in as much open history as our host this week. Royal St. George's. Founded in 1887, it was intended to be a rival to St. Andrews in the south of England. Two members and two guests about to get underway. It's going to be an epic day filled with rain, wind, and no sun. Welcome to Breaking Royal St. George's. in the last two months. My name's Al Burns, I'm 32, and uh, I run the IGC England chapter. Golf for me is about having fun. It's about um, making new connections, new friends. Last week I was thinking, you know, lovely evening at Royal St George's, sun's gonna go down, not a breath of wind, and it's a storm. <laughs> Welcome to England, where the sun don't shine. So yeah, just gotta get the ball in the hole. Bit of wild to bit of three wood on a path, right? Whether it's an 11 or a four, <laughs> I'll still have a smile on my face. Classic British day we've got here. Um, could be worse, I suppose. Could be thunder and lightning. Hey, my name's Jake Harvey. I'm 25. I work for a golf marketing company. Wow. I'm not one to get too stressed on a golf course. Um, I'm usually just happy to be out. I'd say 95 would be a good total today. It's pretty cool. I do remember watching the Open here back in 2011. I think it'll be quite ethereal walking around the fairways that they'll be playing in a few weeks' time. I'm Hugo, I'm 21. I'm from Kent, which is the same county as St George's in, which is very lucky. Hi, I'm Tom Henderson, I'm 22, and I'm from Leicestershire. I've played there for 10 years, and you still get slightly sort of disorientated when the stands go up, because you sort of, you wonder, hang on, is this where this was before, where's this sort of come in? And just seeing the pros walk on the path that you walk week in, week out, I mean, you never take this place for granted, but it really makes you sort of think, this is, this is unbelievable. Yeah, play. Hopefully. Sun might show his face, but in British summer, I can't. Oh, <laughs> can't promise anything. I've been a member here for I think ten years, so the Open will be my first one as a member, which I can't wait for. <laughs> I play off four, so the new handicap system I think cut me down a couple of strokes, which uh, has made me forced to play a bit better than usual. Disaster. So I'm off five, which is. <laughs> Yeah, setting myself up for failure on a day like today out there. It's, um, you know, if the cameras can see, I'll be able to see later on. It's, it's very blustering. With Lynx Golf, I've actually played in worse conditions here than today, and I, it was an absolute disaster. Anything around the 80 mark, 10 over, um, as a full handicapper, I'd, yeah, snap your hand off. <laughs> Normally today, I'd say you'd sort of hope for five, six over handicap. If you get off five shoots sort of 10 over today, I think that's a pretty good score. True pressure. How do you play on weather like this? Um, badly. I'm no. Uh, try and keep it on the floor as much as possible. Um, it's a proper links course, so it should, shouldn't be too wet. It's not going to be the easiest round of golf to play, I don't think. But um, certainly, certainly test your weaknesses in your game. Oh wow, there's some wind there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Tell you what, this left to right wind's doing us no favours with the driver. Anything off centre, just balloons, left or right, doesn't matter. So, but same for everyone. Yeah. So, um, hope we play all right. Premium, I mean, I, I premium can't premium give any problems. needed, I think. Right. Mate, you get that one. I hit one like that today on the course. Archive it, frame it, put it on the wall. Like. 
I'll be playing over for the rest of my life. Not easy putting today, I have to say. This wind and this small butter, it's could go anywhere. Right, and without further ado, we arrive at the first hole, grandstand surrounding the tee box. This is one of a handful of holes here that has retained its original design from 1887. Par four, 442 yards. Not necessarily a gentle handshake here. On each. Oh, we'll much. need all of them, I tell you. <laughs> We've got Hugo with a handicap of five, Royal St. George's member playing alongside Al Burns, handicap 8.7. Well, that wind's going to bring around, so. Yeah, the approach shot's going to be <laughs> juicy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's down to you, mate. Uh, it looks quite scary. Yeah, um, the thing that you don't realise around here is that a lot, I think a lot of the holes are not adjacent to other holes. So you've not got much to miss. Not, not many fairways to go on. And the next team we have is Jake playing along with Tom. Got a 5.2 handicap for Jake and a 4.3 handicap for Tom. Great shot. Oh, looks like the wind has taken that one. Not sure if that's going to be in the fairway, but good strike, good opening shot. Million dollars now. We're in play, that's what matters. They like today, no messing around. Al next to tee up here. Somehow finds a way to draw this ball into the wind. Impressive. He deserves all the applause and more. Nice shot, Al. How am I to draw it in that wind? <laughs> Obviously it's getting crunch time before the open. And so, um, Head greenkeeper does want us to churn up all their pristine fairways and semi rough. So on the narrower fairways and now the first cut here, um, we are using just these uh, mats, which give us the advantage of having a nice lie, but uh, so rewarded for a not very good shot. All right, next up, Jake Harvey. So we got a five iron from 210. That's an intentional cut. That's an impressive cut. That ball, I think that ball cut twice, actually. I mean, I did aim 50 yards left. Quite close to it. And hit it dead straight, and it ended in the right fescue. So, I guess that's Lynx Golf on a day like this. <laughs> All right, here we've got Hugo stepping up to hit his first shot. He's got a five wood left with his partner Al left him with his drive right in the middle of the fairway here. 238 yards. Okay, hats off to him and that, I don't know if that's a cut or what. No one wants to be in this rough here and apparently all of us are, so. All right, Al hit the ball through his body, which, you know, this place is old. Ghosts, ghosts do a up here, Al. I'm I'm sorry about that shot. I hope you hope you're okay. If anything, I've opened up the green for you. It's all right, it's there, so I know. A little gap wedge, 52. Trying to very linksy shot. Trying to bump it into the hill, let it pop up and trickle down. Anywhere on the <laughs> whether it happens, whether it happens or not, is a completely different situation. And this is Tom. That wind is just coming in so hard off the North Sea. Once. All right, here's Hugo with a another shot of the rough. Oh, so close. That is just right. Okay. First old jitters. All right, so here's Al from the greenside bunker. A little slip on the back foot. Uh, downwind. What are you gonna do? That. RGC head cover. Don't mind if I do. All right, it's a par putt on the way from Jake. You know, you got to imagine that the greens are running quick and into the wind, the speed here must just be completely challenging. Putt 
putting into the wind is truly difficult. Love to see the English flag there blowing on the flagstick. That's that's a cool touch. Seemed like that ball broke uphill. Al just a tad on the high side. All right, Hugo taps in for his team's quad. So after the first hole, Hugo and Al are plus four. Tom and Jake are plus two. On to the second hole. A par four, 426 yards. It doesn't look like the longest hole in the world, but this tee box is laid back. Not in a good way, not in a relaxing way, because they're also playing into the wind, so it's gonna be a bit longer. All right, Jake's first to tee off here for his team. Speaking of high, camera had to tilt for that one. I gotta imagine that didn't get more than 220. We'll see what they have in. I've let my partner down. Hugo steps up. I mean, this man, I don't measure in centimeters, but he's got to be hundreds of centimeters tall. Maybe, I don't know. I'd love to get a height on Hugo. With the pose, going a little right. All right, so Tom here, just trying to get the ball back in play. we got a pitching wedge from 250 out. Just trying to find some short stuff because this rough is penal. It really makes you think, what is it going to be like? You know, the whole point of the series is to watch amateur golfers of differing skill levels attack the same elements, the same grass, the same green speeds, the same weather as the pros, the same length, and really seeing, like, how would you play? Absolutely. It's abhorrent, mate. You saw that headers on the best you possibly can out there. When it's wet, obviously it's so juicy that everything just gets trapped yeah, yeah. and your club turns and yeah. it just makes everything five times as hard. <laughs> it's just to not hit it left is an absolute trial. Like, it's so hard. But, um, what we got to play with? Let's see how my partner's getting on. Hugo is looking for a golf ball here. It's just brutal out here. 220, playing 520. <laughs> Al here, hit one through his legs. This is a phenomenon that occurs a lot at Royal St. George's. Gonna have to look into that. Gonna have to speak to the uh, historian. The story of the bad lie. Jake from 198 iron, trying to hoist this ball up. Hugo from 170. Little flighted four iron. Tom. It looks like it's right on line. Good ball. Jake with a chip. Nice chipping stroke. I like that. Really get through the ball. Cover it. Al for par. That is a truly Lynx-like play. Coming in. Ooh, so close. That'll leave a smile on your face. The, you know, it's all about the shots that you remember. He said if I give him a putt, he'll hold it, so I'm not getting the putt out the back. You might have to. All right, coming off the end of the second hole, we've got Tom and Jake coming away with a quad, and Hugo and Al coming away with a, with a single bogey, which feels a lot like a par. So after the second hole, Hugo and Al turn things around a little bit. One over on that hole, they end up at plus five. Tom and Jake, a bit of a roll reversal. They are plus six through two. All right, folks, Ace Cam is live. We're on the third hole, straight into it, and it is not a shorty. 239 yards. This hole plays a little bit into the wind and definitely off the left. 
given the wind today, this feels like perhaps during the open, it'll play a tad shorter. Not a bunker on this hole to be seen. I suppose you could find one if you hit a really insane shot. Pretty complicated two-tiered green, and it features the only tree on the golf course, a tiny blackthorn right of the green. 240 yard par three. With a 60 mile an hour left or right wind. Wow. Al is up first. That is not what he was looking for. Al is going to need to re tee. Tom, member here, seems like he's got a long iron. What a stinger. Man, looks like that thing's going into that upper right seat there in the stands. You know, when someone shows you the club, you know, <laughs> you know it was a good shot. Al back on the tee, filled with confidence and hopefully not a fear to be had. Hugo's in his fourth shot here. He's got about 20 yards, gonna pick up a sand wedge here, trying to just carve this thing onto the green. Yeah, looks like the wind got a hold of that one. I mean, look at that wind. Jake, also short there, got this like, cover. whoa, that was a, don't say it, don't say it. All right, we have located the ball. We're on the third shot here. You'd think that he's gonna make a salad out of all this lettuce. Jake for bogey, this would be an incredible four. The putt is on the way, down the hill. All right, tap in for double. Honestly, that is a situation where a fist bump is deserved. All right, Al coming in, just trying to get this in for a par here. Love those shoes, by the way. Good, looks good. Man, how does that break into the wind? These two teams of two are each playing the same ball. A very fun way to play golf, very communal way to play golf. You'll notice as you look at some of the drone flyovers that there's weird pathways that don't make any sense. That's because two people go to the tee and then the other two go to the fairway. And so they have a sort of an ex expedited pathway to the fairway to be there when the ball lands. And so you actually end up hanging out with your competitor more than your partner. So at the end of the third hole, we got collectively plus five between the two teams. Hugo and Al end up at plus eight. Tom and Jake are also plus eight. So the match is getting close. Fourth hole, folks. Final hole of the first episode of Breaking Royal St. George's. This hole is 496 yards, home to the Himalaya Bunker. This is one of the hardest holes at Royal St. George's, and those who clear the large dune with a straight drive will land on a flat area known as the Lesion Fields. I love how every course in the UK has names to the parts of the holes, not just the holes itself. The green is cut at an angle, and players must avoid overshooting it. They will have a problem on their hands because there's out of bounds running perilously close to the back edge. On the way from Jake, we got a high ball flight there. Loves, loves to hit it high. He's a high flying guy. I mean, the high spirits Jake is. They say the ball flight reflects your, you know, inner sort of subconscious reality. Let's see if that's true for Hugo. Wow, interesting. For a tall man, really keeps it low. It's interesting, the parallels here. Yeah, it's so hard. It's past six for us. Yeah, off the back tee, it's just. We're not finding that ball, by the way. If it's short, Great. that man. Two days ago, I was in my t-shirt and shorts for any American viewers, so. Uh, this is normally mid-June England, but. Well, well, because it's not normal, it's, 
might have been a little bit nicer if we were showing you some joys in the sun, but showing you the full test. And this is the full test, Christ. All right, Al from 240. Good lie. Make something happen here. The hole is right around that bump there on the fairway. Okay, so Tom here, the four iron, just trying to get it back in play. Four iron's pretty bold play with that mound in front of you, but you know, I guess he's gonna get it up there. All right, now we're, Jake's got a little wedge in his hands here and we're looking at uh, about 122 in. The pitching wedge. Nice shot. Hugo here, just chipping one up there like a true English golfer. Come down. Ooh, he clipped that well. That feels very good. Don't you love when you just watch a shot because you know it's good? When there's a bad shot, you just it's hard to watch. You just got to look away. At least they're giving something for the highlight reel. Otherwise, it's looking pretty slim at this rate. Don't think we're finding it in here. <laughs> All right, we've got Tom here looking to get this one close. Look at that. That is truly how to play the course. You can tell someone's played the course a lot if they make a move like that. Oh, one close to the pin. <laughs> All right, Al for par. Boom. First par of the day, I might say. Nice putt, Al. So we've got Jake lining up for a bogey putt. And just slides right in. Nice bogey. So heading off the fourth hole, we've got Jake and Tom here. It will finish with a bogey. And Hugo and Al finish with a par. So that brings the team totals of the first four holes at Royal St. George's to Hugo and Al at plus eight and Tom and Jake at plus nine. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll play the fifth through ninth holes at Royal St. George's, home of the 149th Open Championship.